Well, welcome back. Today I want to talk about lumens, pan tilt zoom cameras and controllers, but most importantly, programming those so they go together and work together. Everything these days when it comes to pan tilt zoom and control is all IP based. And that can be a little daunting for anybody. With that, I recruited a friend of mine to help us with a little bit of a training video. Just some details and information for programming the cameras and programming the controller. It's not super complicated, but if you've not done it before and if you're not familiar with networking and IP control, it can be a little confusing. One thing to keep in mind is in this video, we are connecting everything to a wireless router. Now you might be connecting it to a network switch and that's okay. It's really pretty much the same thing because in the end we've got to get certain information from either your network or your router so we can get these things to communicate with each other. Hello, we're going to be showing the setup for static IP on the Lumens IP cameras and controller. Um, I'll be cutting back and forth between the computer and the controller just to kind of go through some of the options there. Um, I'm going to start on the computer. I'm actually going to start on my modem slash router setup page. And the reason for that is because some of the setup here will become important in the process. Um, you'll need information from here. Um, and I can show you how mine looks. Yours is going to probably look different, um, but it should still have similar options. So the first thing I actually want to show is under my DHCP settings. And that's just where it gives me the modem address and the subnet mask. Those are going to be used in as part of the setup. Um, for the most part, the controller or the cameras should pick up on that. Um, but if not, we will need to input this information a little bit later on. Something else that comes into play um, on, again, most modems or routers when you're doing this is the dynamic and static routing. On this particular modem, you either have dynamic routing, dynamic routing on or off across the board. On other ones you can you can just have static IP addresses basically for devices you want and then other devices would be dynamic but this one is not quite so fully featured um, but I just want to show that that that's definitely a setting here I have to disable dynamic routing so that I can assign static IP addresses. Um, there's some static routing settings here but they don't really come into play for what we're doing. Um, and the other thing I want to show is this DHCP reservation. This is where I can actually assign static IP addresses. Um, on this particular modem, once I turn on static, it will actually automatically assign them. But if I want to assign my own, I can do that here. Um, I would need the MAC address, which I can get that from the cameras if I need to. And then I can assign the IP addresses. And then it gives me a list of everything that's assigned. I know that these three here are my cameras and controller, um, just from previous setup. But um, I, I can get in here and set it. And you might have a better modem or router that gives you more functionality than this one. Hopefully you do. Um, but that will definitely come into play. So I wanted to cover that. Um, it is also helpful to make sure if you want to control things through your browser like I am here, that you have the cameras and controller on the same network as the computer that, that you're using. For example, this is our streaming computer and it is hooked up on the same network with those cameras and the controller so that way I can easily access those settings. We're going to cut to the controller and take a look at how you can find the cameras. And then once you have the address of the cameras, you can come to the web portal and log in there. So if I want to find my cameras from the controller, I actually can use this search function. Um, and hitting search, then you need to choose your protocol. And in most cases, I think it's going to be Visca IP. And then I can select that by pushing in the PT speed button. I can also navigate elsewhere by turning it. So if I start my search, should find my first camera. Okay, and it's actually finding my, my second camera, and that's, that's okay. I'll go ahead and select that. I'm going to set that ID to 2, because that is my camera 2. And then my title, I'm going to type that in. I already know the title that I use. I'm going to go ahead and just type that in. I'm just using the, the keys like you would on an old cell phone if you were text messaging.
and then exit. And if I hit exit again, I could then start another search and it could find my second camera, but I'm gonna go ahead and choose no exit and exit out of that. And that's how I can search for and set up my cameras. Um, and that's also, like I said, that's where I'll get the IP address that I can plug into the browser. So now that I have the address of my camera, I can go ahead and type that into my browser and it will bring me to the login portal. The username is just gonna be admin. The default password, which we haven't changed, is 9999. You can log in. And under the settings, you can go to network. And under network, you can turn DHCP on or off. Off would mean static. You'll notice it lists my IP address, which obviously matches there. And then there is the, the mask and the gateway that I showed you in my modem setup. In this case, the gateway and the DNS are the same, and that's usually gonna be the case. But again, if it's not, you would change it here. But that is gonna depend on how a church might have their network set up. Um, I will say I almost exclusively use this web portal for most everything for the camera. Um, so uh, coming here to see this, set this is handy. You can also set your presets on the camera. I use that a lot. You can set your exposure, white balance, focus, etc. I use that a lot as well. Um, one thing to note back on the network tab is if for any reason you do need to update the address of the camera, you can do that here. You can input a new IP address and apply it. Just be aware that that will immediately make after it applies, that it'll immediately make the web page unusable because it'll no longer be at the right address. Um, also, it, I would change it here first and then change it on your, your modem page. Then once it's changed here, navigate to the new address. You'll be able to log in like normal and make any changes that you need to um, or just verify setup. Uh, for the web portal, though, that's, that's, the, that's the network section right there. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Um, so we'll go back over to the controller. So if I want to set up the controller itself, I can go into this setup option here. The password by default is gonna be four zeros. Something to, to make note of is that the documentation for the controller says by default, it will be on IP address dot one zero zero. And for what it's worth, the cameras are supposed to default to IP address dot one five zero. Um, however, depending on how your, your network is set up, those IP addresses might not be available, so that may not be accurate. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, to set up the controller, I can go into keyboard setting, and then go to IP configuration. And this is where I can change it from static to DHP, um, or DHCP. And of course we have it on static, but I wanna go ahead and change it. So if I push down the button, and I'm just gonna tell you, this process here is a little bit slow, and sometimes pushing down one button doesn't do what I want. I have to push down the other. But what I'm looking for is a plus sign in the, the lower right-hand corner on this. There we go. There's the plus sign. So now I can change that. Okay, I wanted to stop just for a second. He just touched on something, and I kind of wanted to punctuate that real quick. When you save the IP address on the controller, the KB30, you need to leave it alone for a few seconds. You, you can set it and save it and then wait. Uh, if you navigate away from that too quickly, it won't save it and you'll have to go back and do it again. So it only takes a few seconds and there'll be a little plus sign that shows up when it's saved and ready to go. Okay, let's get back to the video. So I can toggle it to DHCP or static. Of course we want static, so I'll select that. And then if I need to key in the IP address, I can. Um, you just scroll, using, turning the wheel, and then you would type in the number. Um, my is, mine is already set to 229, so I'm going to leave that. But this is also where you'll see that sub, subnet mask and the gateway. Mine are, again, correctly set, but if I needed to change them, I could scroll to the number I need to change and just type it in. Since I'm all set, I'm just going to scroll to the exit. And then I don't need to change any of these other settings right now for the static IP, so I'm going to scroll to exit and select that. And then you notice I can also get into the camera settings here. I cannot set static here, you'll notice. Um, this just lets me change the name of the camera or change the IP address. So I'm gonna keep the name as it is, but if I need to change the IP address of the camera, I can also come in here and tell it that new IP address. Um, again, scroll to what you'd like, type it in. Um, again, typically you'll wanna do this after you've updated your, your modem or router and the address that it's assigning. 
Um, but then once you once you go ahead and change that, you can hit exit. And again, I'm not going to change mine because mine's correct already. Um, and then go ahead and exit and exit again. Um, and really, that's all there is to getting it set up to use static addressing. Um, it's pretty straightforward. The biggest thing is simply having your, your modem or router set up to allow for this as well. And just being aware that if you make changes to the addresses here on the controller, you'll have to update the addresses. And on your web portal, you'll also have to update uh, the addresses and possibly redirect to the portal login on the new address once that's all set. Well, thank you so much for taking time to look at this video. I hope it was a great help. And if there's anything else we can do, give us a call, look us up online, send us an email. We'd love to help. Thank you so much.